Right, question 26. The diagram shows part of a sketch of the curve y equals sine x. A. Write down the coordinates of the point P. Now, a few things to know about sine curves is that the y equals sine x curve always starts at 0, 0. It goes up and it reaches 1. So that's 1 there. And it gets down halfway through. It gets down to 0, 0 again. And then it gets down here, and that's level with minus 1. So I'm going to put here minus 1. And it goes up and finishes at 0, 0 there. This, the time it takes to go up, down, down here, and back here, on x, that is a value of 360. Because it actually follows the degrees. But that's 360. That's all of the way, which means p is halfway. q is 3 quarters of the way. And this point here, that's a quarter of the way. Okay, so the point P is halfway, 360, so it's 180 across, and obviously it's on zero, so it's 180, zero. Q, that is three quarters of the way, so three quarters of 360 is 270, because uh, a quarter is 90, so 90. Plus 90 is 180, plus 90 is three, uh, 270. And it reaches this low part, the lowest part of the sine curve, which is minus 1. So it's 270 minus 1. And this sine curve will actually keep going down and up and down and up. and So it come back and do it again at 720, which is double 360, and carry on forever, always reaching a high of 1 and a low of minus 1, and always having uh, this length of 360. So that's part B. Uh, here is a sketch of the curve y equals a cos bx plus c uh, in between naught and 360 again. So here it actually tells us naught 360. Find the values of a, b and c. Now if you were to Google a, a cosine curve, remember this is the sine curve that starts at 0. Now what a cosine curve does is starts at 1 and then by halfway, it will get down to minus 1. And then by f the 360, it will get back up to the top again. So if you look at this, it's actually start, it's like this part of the sine curve. It starts up there, goes down here, and it would get back up again like that. Okay, And it's, uh, it follows the same rules. It takes 360 to do that. And it reaches a high of 1 and a low of minus 1. So we need to remember our transforming graphs rule. The C, if you just randomly add a number on the end of your graph equation, what that will do is it will push the graph upwards. So if we know that usually it's meant to start at uh, 1 and go down to minus 1 and back up to 1, well the middle of the graph would be at 0. You can see here the middle of this graph, the middle of it is at 1. So actually this whole graph has been pushed up by 1, so C must be 1. The, If you look at it as well, the graph is taller than you would expect, because from minus 1 to 1, that is a, that is a height of 2. Minus 1 to 0, that's 1, and then 0 to 1, that's 2. Now this graph goes from minus 1 all the way up to 3. So the, the it's actually been doubled in size in the y direction. Okay, so it's gone taller and well, taller both ways. So from minus one to three, it's doubled, and that would be the a. If you put a number in front of your equation, your graph equation, that will double the height of it. Well, if it's two, it'll double it. If it's a three, it'll triple it, and so on. So this has been doubled in height. So a is 2. Now for the b, now if you put a number in front of the x, like y equals something cos x, if you put a number in front like 2x or 3x, what that does, it actually narrows the, the graph. So if you put a 2 in front of it, it would be half the size. So whereas it usually takes, for example this one, y equals sine x, it starts at 0, it goes up there, to the middle by halfway and down here and then it completes under 360. 
If you put, changed it to y equals sine 2x, between 0 and 360, it would be able to do this twice. It would go up, down, and finish on p, and then do another one and finish on 360. So it would be squished. It would be half the size. Now, if you look at this, remember we said the cosine curve starts up there, gets down to the bottom by halfway, and back up to the top. Well, this does that once, twice, three times in between 0 and 360. So it's actually being squished by a scale factor of a third. It's three times as squished, so it's a third of the width. So the way it works, if it's a third of the width, that B has to be 3. Because, like I said here, if it was sine 2x, it would be half. If it was sine 3x, it would be a third. If it was sine 4x, it would be a quarter, and so on. So our B there is 3. So I'll write it out in full. Y equals 2 cos uh, 3x plus 1. So once again, the 2 makes everything a bit taller, double the height. The 3 here makes everything squished by a scale factor of a third. And the 1 makes the whole thing move up one place. So it's 2, 3 and 1. And that is the end of the test. Good luck.